Now an ACOG is basically my favorite sighting system for this style of rifle. Obviously they're a very niche sighting system so they don't work well on a lot of things. But what they do work well on, they work really well on. And that would be something like this. So what exactly makes me like the ACOG sighting system? Well, let's start from the top. Number one, it has three fail safes. So what I'm talking about, and some of them even have four, is inside this piece of glass, on like a lot of red dots or variable optics or whatever, there are three fail safes. So when you look through this, there are three things that are gonna see to it that you have some sort of aiming radical. A fail safe is basically a system put in place because everything will fail. That's just the way it is. At some point, everything will fail. So you put multiple failure points in there. So as it starts to fail, you can pick up on it, but you're not out of a piece of glass. So the first one is this fiber optic tube. There's a fiber optic piece in there and the sun literally turns that on and I have a reticle. The second one is there's also a piece of tritium in there. So let's say something happens to this fiber optic piece, the piece of tritium will still glow. I will still have a reticle. Say the fiber optic piece fails, the tritium fails, well the, the reticle is actually etched in the glass as well, so it will still work there. And say, now this is not all models, but like this one isn't that way, but some of them are. Say the fiber optic piece fails, say the tritium fails, say somehow it's etched in there and you can't see it like this front piece of glass breaks or this rear piece of glass breaks. A lot of the ACOGs even have a set of iron sights right on top of it. So no matter what, you can still use the sighting system. <clears throat> now why is that important? Because if you go to like a scope, well it's etched right in the reticle. So that, that's always etched in unless something happens to the scope itself you still have a reticle. Well, those are a different type of sighting system. This is in the group of like iron sights and red dots. That's where these shine. Next one, it's 3X magnification. So transitioning from open sights, which I really like to do, right up until, you know, I got older and I can't really see through my eyes that well anymore. Going from 3X or going from iron sights to 3x is a nice transition because it's enough zoom where you can increase your ability to hit something but it's not so much zoom that it's not usable in some sort of like close quarter situation it's only like they they range i think they go from like 1.5 up to like just about four the point is it's about 3x and like even throwing a magnifier on a red dot is a night and day difference that little just that little bit of magnification makes it so much easier to do precision shooting. So how did I shoot? Well, right now I'm still better with the open sights than I am with the ACOG at range. That I'm sure will change over time, but this is still a pretty new system to me. I shot this right here, sub MOA, not too bad. Obviously, yes. You go up to like 10 or something like that, your precision shooting ability is going to go up, but then you lose the ability of close quarters, like close stuff within 100 yards. And I believe 3X is a nice balance between, you know, precision shooting and close quarters. Next reason, arranging reticle. So one of the things I love about iron sights, especially on military rifles, is they have range on it. So like this drum right here, I would just set it to the range I want to shoot, and then I just send shots. I'm already dialed in for the range, all I have to do is hit what I'm shooting at. Inside of just about every ACOG reticle, now there is a pile of reticles, and I know there is some even without a BDC. Generally speaking, they have a BDC reticle in it, and they're good. I checked it with a ballistic calculator. Now, because my brain works in yards, and that's actually in meters, this is only true up to 400. Now, if I actually seen things in meters or I have a laser range finder, yeah, just about all the way through the entire reticle, it's accurate. 
Plus, I'm shooting a 168 grain, and that reticle is actually for a 175, which I might someday wind up switching to just so it fits even a little bit better. Even in meters at like 800 yards, then it starts to be off. But I mean, am I really going to realistically take shots at 800 with this? No, but it's possible. So as long as I have a rangefinder and I can click that bad boy in meters, I still have a possibility of hitting. The ranging reticle is amazing. I love it. And that's where red dots really lack. Yeah, you can get some EOTex that'll have some ranging reticles in there, but for the most part, when you're talking about a red dot or a holographic, you're looking at a single, like, aiming device, so you have to do holdovers. Well, in ACOG, you don't. Plus, it allows you to measure your target. That reticle is actually made to go from shoulder to shoulder. So you find the line that fits best from shoulder to shoulder, and you break your shot. And again, I checked it on a BDC calculator. It's pretty freaking accurate. Mine's not quite as accurate as like it would be if I were running a 175, which again, I may be switching over to that just so it lines up with my reticle better because then it will work throughout the whole entire reticle. But the point is, is that gives you an ability. So even if you don't have a laser rangefinder, even if you can't look at a distance and estimate it in your head, just putting the reticle on your target will get you at the right holdover. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. Next reason, they're small. So they look good on a rifle like this. When you throw on a variable power optic and the optics like this long, it just looks goofy. These look especially well on AR-15s. They're just aesthetically pleasing. They don't take up a whole lot of space. They're not that heavy. They look good. This is a good looking piece of glass on here. So aesthetics have a lot to do with it with me. And again, I like the fact that it's shorter because this rifle just doesn't look right with a big ass piece of glass on there. AR-15s, because they're such a small compact rifle, they look goofy with a big piece of glass on there. And ACOG, it's right about the right size. Next reason, few moving parts. They did, they kept these moving parts down to a minimum. We'll get into the glass itself a little bit later, but there's just not a whole lot going on here. You got windage and you got elevation. That's all you got for things that can move. Well, besides, you know, obviously connecting it to your Picatinny rail, but we're not going to talk about that. We're just talking about internal moving parts. We got two of them. We don't have parallax. We don't have a little switch for a lighted reticle. There's just two moving parts. Not bad at all. Uh... It uses the prism system. So usually with sculpts, it'll be an erector set with glass. Now I'm told that the prism system is more durable than the erector set. I don't know how that would be possible, but I'll just take their word for it. So allegedly, the prism system is more durable. I don't know how it could be, because I mean, if something breaks, something breaks. But there is a lot less glass in here. There's like 11 pieces of glass in an erector set, and this has like half that. Looking at like five or six pieces of glass. I'll put some diagrams right here so you can see the difference. So instead of having a bunch of pieces of glass that get closer and farther from each other to give you your zoom, it's just a prison system where you can adjust windage and elevation and you're at a fixed power zoom. There's just not a lot of pieces in there. There is. There's like five or six compared to a scope which has like 11 or better. Field of view is massive. When you aim down this, you have a huge field of view. So again, transitioning from iron sights to this, is a, it's easy. Because you're still maintaining your field of view. You're still maintaining your BDC. But now, you have 3x magnification, so you can increase your ability to make a precision shot. Plus, there is something right inside the glass, especially if you go with like an ACSS reticle. To look at a target and be able to tell how far away it is just by how it fits on your reticle. That's really nice. Yes, again, you know, there are variable power optics that will also do those things. But this is a nice compact package that looks good. It's small, has multiple fail saves, gives you an ability to estimate range by just looking at the target, has a massive field of view, and it has 3x magnification just to make it a little bit easier to make a precision shot. And that's honestly what really draws me to ACOG. Like, there's just a lot of thought behind it. Like, how it's all put together, you can tell they were like, hey, you know a bunch of 18-year-olds are going to be running around in a desert throwing this around all willy-nilly-like. 
We need to make this strong enough so they don't just all break on them. What can we do to make this 18 year old proof? They took a piece of wire and literally attached the caps to the scope so you can't lose them. They put multiple fail safes in there. They even have a little spot right here where you can like put a red dot or a backup iron sight on top of it. There's just a lot of thought they put in there. They used to even put a Bible verse on here because chances are, you know, if this site was going to the military, it could kill someone. And I really like that, but, you know, everybody got pissy about that. So they no longer put a Bible verse on it. But it was really cool, and I love the thought behind it. So much thought behind the glass. Like, this is likely going to be used to kill. Let's even just put a Bible verse on it. We'll bless the site itself. Again, they don't do that anymore. you got to buy an older model to get a blessed site. But even if, there was just a lot of thought behind these. And they're caliber specific, too, for military caliber. So if you have a military rifle, you can typically get these with a BDC that will match your caliber. That's amazing. Anyway, those are just the things that really draw me to the site. I wanted to make a video about it. This way everybody understood. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, got a Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. There's probably even a link for this if you go to my store page. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.